Before the Infinity Stones, before Batman, before Iron Man, before Wolverine, there was Blade. And Blade was so cool. If you're on the younger side, you may have heard of this movie in passing, or maybe seen it on TV, if you still have TV, that is. But I imagine a lot of people really don't consider it one of the best superhero movies, and maybe one of those movies that should have stayed in the past. I've heard criticisms that Blade is a product of its time, even some people calling it just straight up a bad movie. I understand where these people are coming from, but I feel like they are awfully misguided in their views. If you haven't seen the movie, just take a look at this montage. If you haven't seen the movie, does that not at least make you think that it might be decent? So let's start with the first criticism I've heard that Blade is a product of its time. I agree, it is. And that's the point for me. I don't really see this as a criticism. This is part of the charm of the movie. The story takes place in the late 90s. The art style and characters are straight out of that decade, especially the late 90s. Many of them have that cyberpunk industrial neo-goth look that was so prominent at the time thanks to movies like The Matrix. But wait a minute, Blade came out before The Matrix? Is that the style of the Blade comic book? No, not really. I'd describe it more as 90s near futurism and it works really well just the dark and cold tones and the nearly muted ambient sounds give it a very much late night anime sort of feel this looks great to me if you want an example of the complete opposite of what blade does you just need to take a look at the movie that came out around the same time spawn Oh, and by the way, if you haven't seen the Spawn HBO show, 100% give it a go. It's so good. It's extremely dark, but way ahead of its time. The movie, not so much. Okay, quick summary of the plot. Blade is about a vampire-human hybrid who is aided and armed by his human mentor to hunt vampires. Blade's mother was attacked by a vampire while she was pregnant. She died, but he lived. Unfortunately, he'd undergone certain genetic changes. He can withstand garlic, silver, even sunlight. And he's got their strength. After saving a bitten doctor from an attack, she is introduced to the vampire world where she must find a cure for herself before okay, turning. Vampire Anatomy 101. Crosses and running water don't do dick, so forget what you've seen in the movies. You use a steak, silver, or sunlight. You know how to use one of these? Empties all browns already chamber. Silver hollow point filled with garlic. You ain't for the head or the heart. Anything else is your ass. Meanwhile, a younger and rebellious vampire, Deacon Frost, is looking for legends regarding the Blood God, a power deity who would dominate the human world and bring vampires out of the shadows. Out of business, shall we? I think the cinematography of Blade is excellent, especially compared to the porno level draped to DVD quality uh, of the third film. The second one's great too. It's just missing a lot of that darker cool cold tones very like middle of the night feel that i really like about the first one so side characters i i like karen jensen a lot i like that she's not a romantic interest he's just trying to help her because she reminds him of his mother there's no romantic subplot she's just a competent character who isn't relying on him either he never needs to save her most of the time she's saving him and it's the same with whistler too like he okay he's that typical mentor type of archetype but he just does it so well especially because it's chris christopherson he's so perfect for just like one of these wise old sage slow speaking roles that he's badass all the time Especially when he shows up later. Especially considering you he's like 60 time. years old or something and he's fighting vampires even though Blade is the one who's super powered. I also like this guy and 
later on in the movie, you'll know why. Oh man, like the way they set him up in this scene for this scene later. Oh, I also really love the relationship between Blade and Frost. Blade knows of Frost, but to him he's just another vampire. But Frost admires Blade. It's nice to finally meet you, man. Had my eye on you for years. To the point where he even tries to emulate his ability to walk outside by putting extra heavy uh, sunscreen on and wearing all black. But at the end of the day, he realizes how feeble it is and that ultimately the only way to actually be a daywalker like as powerful as blade or stronger is to become the blood god my only real criticism is that frost should have been a better final villain of the series but at the time they had no idea if they would make any future movies or whatever yeah some of the characters are cheesy like deacon frost's girl i guess whoever this person is i'm really gonna enjoy this now oh and also that main henchman we're gonna be gods. Yeah! <laughs> I'm gonna be naughty. Uh, on the, I, I think it's hilarious. I love his character, but okay, if you're coming into this thinking it's gonna be like a real head scratcher, uh, that's not what you're looking for here. But I don't think it really pulls down the movie that much. Blade, Whistler, Karen Jensen, Frost, this head vampire guy. They're all very unique characters with their own motivations and conflicts with each other. Oh, and speaking of the head vampire guy, the whole background lore about the whole like council of vampires running things behind the scene and all their like super high tech undercity is so cool. I love that so much. I love when an adaptation builds upon the world that it's in so much that the movie is kind of like a tease of it and you want to go further into the comics or in this case like where are all these other vampires from are they all from the same city or different places some of them look ancient i really like when movies that are from a different world don't just spoon feed you lore what else are in those sacred vampire files why is frost so powerful he's not on the council what about this guy does he just live there a proper adaptation should leave you wanting to know more from the original source but not rely on it for the quality of its standalone material. One more thing that really makes this movie is Wesley Snipes. Uh, so much so that he carries the entire franchise. Without him, this movie and the sequel and the third, well the third movie didn't work, but the first and second movies just would not work at all. He is the core to this movie. He is Blade. I know they're remaking Blade soon. The fuck are you out of your damn mind? And I've heard it's Mashral Ali playing him. I'm okay with that. I think it's good. I would be good with Michael Jai White as well. Uh, but yeah, Wesley Snipes, like, this was the role he was born to play. I mean, I love his other stuff too, but this, it's so perfect. Get over it. Oh, and this movie is very gory, by the way. I remember I saw this when I was like nine. I guess my parents thought, oh, it's a superhero movie, so whatever, it could be for kids. I was like nine years old, and there's a lot of blood. There's a ton of swearing, too. There's surprisingly no sex, but there's everything else to make up for it. <laughs> The point I'm trying to drive home is that I don't want to see Blade become another film lost in the past. I personally still watch it every year. It's so good when you're up like at 2 a.m. or something and everybody's asleep because it's so quiet. You know, I'm talking about that late summer night during that in-between time where it's well after people have gone to sleep and not quite early morning yet. Just lo-fi your way into watching this movie. It'll really hit the spot. And I hope this video is a great stepping off point for the next movie I'm going to review, Spawn. No, just kidding. Spawn is, uh, Spawn is Spawn. Thanks for watching this video. If you like the content, please consider following and subscribe. Also click the bell for any notification. Next week we're going to talk about some uh, TV shows, so that'll be exciting. Anyway, see ya. There are worse things out tonight than vampires. Like what? Like me.